uh, let's start then with the with how the open discussion rounds will uh, will go. We uh, we will we will uh, propose some questions to uh, to the panelists, and uh, they will be discussed. And uh, I encourage the audience to uh, to to take over uh, in in the slider to to vote and ask more questions. Uh, for this discussion room, we have uh, David, Xiang, Gillen, and uh, and Julia. And I don't think Janis is here. And Martina, and me yeah, it's, uh, it's here. Janis hmm? is here. I just didn't recognize the name. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's, Hi, Janis. Uh, hey, Janis. Good to have you. Yes, it's here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, and we're gonna kick it off with um, with the first uh, question, um, and it's basically some recent works deal with uh, simple deformable objects and scalability of these approaches. Uh, are we ready to deal with real world deformable objects like the ones we we have seen now in uh, as a Corey's talk with uh, with real gowns or t-shirts, or are we? Are we still in the face of where we mostly uh, deal with cables, ropes, and other more simpler objects? What is the possible gap between these current approaches and stuff that we need to employ it into the real world? Hello, if you let me start, as I have not talked yet, I'm fresh. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, so I, I think that we are definitely ready for tackling these more complex objects. Because one thing that we have discovered while trying to deal with the whole complexity of the, of the, of the thing is that we don't really need a precise modelization of everything. Just the small parts that are useful for doing the task, actually. For, for, for example, recognizing corners or uh, dealing with uh, where some particular parts are like I don't know, the colors, for example, something like this. So we are not anymore trying to deal with a complete set of features. Like when you try to, to grasp a, a Mac, for example, that you try to figure out exactly where the, the complete shape is and where the handle is and everything. Uh, I think that the current trend is to start to think that we don't need all this complexity. We don't need a, a mesh uh, modeling, modeling everything. We just need to deal with the important things. Or what we need is like an, an approximator of everything, like uh, Zagori has shown us uh, uh, when just trying to figure out from the point of view of the forces that are changing between the contact forces between the gown and the, and the arm, for example. There was not really, uh, so the simulation had this, this model, but then the real execution does not need that model okay, anymore. So short answer is yes. Okay, thanks, Dylan. And what do you other speakers think? I was gonna talk, but I'm from the same group than Guillaume, so I'm in this trend of thought too, even though <laughs> Guillaume has been very fast at saying, yes, yes, we can do everything and that's that's not true even for rigid objects. At the end, there is a lot of uh, variability. And, and yes. He has been very optimistic. I mean, <laughs> I, I also wish to say yes, of course, but there are many things that, that need to be taken into account. But I understand the point of this answer. I mean, that sometimes you focus a lot on the detail, um, like modeling stuff very precisely, but we don't really need these models because because uh, I mean, the 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 task itself is guiding you without uh, paying that much, uh, you know, attention to the detail. So there is always some mm -hmm. latent space that things belong that helps you make something rather than you know model pretty much everything. Now I'm gonna contradict myself, but uh, <laughs> but that's that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, <laughs> of course, this is the time. Yeah. Because it's true that we are able to, to model particular parts and with that, allegedly, we are able to do a lot of things. 
but we have seen, for example, trying to to put not to put flat on the on the table some clothing, and imagine there is some wrinkles there, and then there is a lot of current research trying to unwrinkle, you know, to flatten this with uh, kind of different motions, either using the models or either using some learned uh, sensory motor actions with deep learning or something like this. And at this point, maybe we need to 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 extend this idea of I need just small parts of the deformable to I need basically a clear idea on how the deformable is, okay? So contradicting myself, at some point we need some more uh, fine-grained models to do something, maybe. Or uh, you have seen that we are trying to put on the table this, uh, not put flat on the table, this strategy of moving uh, using the external, the external uh, constraint. Uh, here, what happens if there is a small error and you know they have a, a small wrinkle here and there. Then basically you need to recognize everything and, and be able to you know unfold this. And again, we have to, to look at the, the form of all as a whole, not, not this small detail. Yeah, but again, we have to understand what is what it needs to be done. And at the end for the manipulation, probably you just need to know where the corners are so that you can move them. So it's more at the end going back to the rigid, rigid objects of literature, like affordances. We need to understand what is the affordance giving a, a particular state that you don't need to understand exactly how the wrinkle is, just that there is a wrinkle there. And, and that needs to be flattened or not, depending on what is the task that you are doing. So maybe so, you don't need to. So again, contradicting myself in the second time, so coming coming again to my first argument, you not you don't need an exact model of everything, just a rough idea on what's going on here and there to, to be able to do things, yeah? Well, I guess the, the, the question is the, the degree of the, of the granularity of this rough idea. It yeah. depends a bit on the task, I think. I, I think that not all That's the tasks require the same, the same, the same amount of uh, like information and the same level of modeling, I, I, I suppose. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I think task is really a, a very important thing when we are dealing with this manipulation of the formables, because basically the task is shaping the kind of everything that we need. So, so David, you have been a, been a fan of PCA, right? As representation. So, but then when, when Gillum said, uh, if you have a representation, like you need uh, the flattening, you would need this, this, uh, this finer grained representation, like then how, how would you approach approach this with your models if the task would be uh, flattening a piece of cloth? Um, well, sorry, there, there was, um, are these questions posted somewhere? Uh, there was one about, I mean, the, the very first one about, are we ready to, I don't see if we can, the question was, are we ready to, move into more realistic type of uh, manipulation task, right? Uh, I, I don't know if, if we're still discussing that one. Um, yeah, somehow. Yeah, yeah somehow. <laughs> or, or maybe, yeah, it's a uh, follow-up, I think. A follow-up. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's, um, it's, it's I guess, um, Julia mentioned it's, 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 um, it's, it's a difficult problem. I mean, it, of, in a grant application where we can um, mention many things that can be solved, uh, but the reality is that uh, like really having um, consumable robotic systems doing these things for us, I, I think is still a bit not yet there. Um, I'm, I mean, if, in my defense, if I may, of the very simplistic uh, objects, um, I mean, it's, it's not that that's all the, the, the robot or the algorithm can do, I will say, is that we um, select a type of, of test bed to evaluate something, you know, whether it's a very well structured cloth or a cable or I don't know, something, um, by, by using those we can Proof you know, specific uh, issues. So I, I will. I mean, I know my, my comment will be that I, I do see it's still a bit uh, difficult to really uh, do. As I don't know, because the, the people who fund all this work, um, they would like to see in, in real applications. So that's why we are studying this from a 
very fundamental perspective. That's, that would be my, my comments. Thanks, David. And I was wondering also about Xiang's opinion, because uh, actually the work that you presented is mostly about these linear deformable objects that are, of course, uh, extremely important. But still here, um, what do you think about the scalability of these approaches? So of course, this must be a starting point. So we need to start working with more simple shapes, but then uh, do you, but do you think is the gap to more complex shapes? And if we have this kind of approaches are actually ready for these, for real world uh, objects. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Actually, uh, I'm thinking if we are talking about something, we want to make the system work. Uh, in my experience, actually some, maybe some specific design, some specific design in hardware, in some specific tasks will work better than maybe the general formulation. So in our project, we are doing something about the deformable linear object. Actually, in particular, we are doing something about the USB soldering uh, system. So actually by the end, we developed some uh, hardware system. It's a mechanism, it's not just a, a programming or control theory. But we find that if we use the maybe specific design or module to realize the USB soldering task, we can have a higher successful rate. And another example is actually, maybe we're talking about the cross manipulation. I guess, yes, we can push the robot to do some cross manipulation, maybe in publication in papers, a bit uh, progress. But if we really push the robot to the factory to do the close manipulation. I guess, just my guess, maybe some uh, some specific design which we can control the cost in some, uh, maybe some steps will work better than the general formulation. And also I guess this is a, a big gap between the real world and the general formulation because we have a lot of to do. If we want to totally mimic the way how the human hand to manipulate something. We still have a long way to do with the, the data and how we improve the, maybe the sensor and the motors. That's my, my comment, yeah. Yes, thanks, that's very true. And I see there is also a question from the audience. So Benjamin Old is saying, currently there are a lot of very different methodologies developed for different sub-problems, object types, manipulation tasks, and etc. Do you think that there will be a convergence in the near future toward one particular family of algorithms, like we see in image processing where we have CNNs or natural language processing with transform transformer-based architectures? And if so, which family of methodologies currently is the strongest candidate for such a convergence? Wow. So that's... <laughs> I think that that's a very big and um, difficult question because uh, people from image processing, they have a, let's call it easier scenario. Not not, a, not not an easy problem, but at least an easier scenario because they don't need embodiment. So they can deal with um, image databases, for example, and that's fair enough. Uh, whereas uh, we have to deal not only with the real deformable, but also with the real embodiment of the robot, the capabilities of each hand, of each arm. Uh, and we have not agreed in the community which are the interesting tasks in the sense if, uh, I don't know, folding is what do we want to make research on or unfolding or dressing or um, helping in everyday uh, the formal manipulations like putting a tablecloth or making beds or, I don't know, there's a, an infinity of uh, tasks. So I don't think that in a close, um, in a close uh, time, we are able to agree 
on which kind of tasks and embodiments and capabilities are are the the ones that we want to agree. So in this, this common technique, and of course that uh, deep learning techniques are going to get into these, and we have seen we have seen already that for a lot of uh, grasping, they are there already. And we had a lot of uh, grasping uh, control is now driven by uh, by deep learning methods. Mm, but I'm not sure that this is going to win because uh, there is a long history and. Uh, of they using... they also have the problem of ground truth, no? Also for grasping, they need to simulate a grasp, and it's not easy to simulate even for rigid objects. So yeah, that is basically the problem we have in general for robotics and for soft manipulation is even more yeah. true is the ground truth. We don't have. So data. Julia has said has presented already that we have a project that is devoted to benchmarking. Yes. So we are thinking on that, but I'm not really confident that at the end of the, the project, we can come with the, the solution for the community. We can just enlighten a little bit because the task is really, really, really difficult. And I don't know, for example, that we want to provide a robot with a dexterity of a human when manipulating textiles. I don't think that this is maybe the objective. Julie has already shown in his present in her presentation that basically the research in uh, in textile manipulation has been done with a parallel reaper, and this has been enough for a lot of things. So I don't know why we would we would like to complicate all the all the and the, 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 the factors to have more a lot of more complicated graspings if basically with a pinch grasp we can do almost everything and then if we can extend this pinch grasp to a manual pinch grasp or a, a, a point, la, point line for example grasp or plain plane and basically this is a, a small set of kind of grasps so yeah that's my opinion my opinion is that no in this case short short, short answer is no okay yeah. I also find it quite difficult uh, because I think that, uh, let's say, first of all, is the, the variation in terms of tasks. I mean, um, in robotics, the type of tasks are uh, the same num of number of tasks that the human can do. Uh, for example, you can have from folding, you can have cutting, you can have uh, assembly with deformable objects, you can have grasping with deformable objects. I mean, the variability of tasks is so high. So. It's quite difficult to have a consensus on methods. I mean, even if um, we start discussing, uh, let's say between, if we choose between data-driven and, and uh, uh, more physics-based approaches, then we may have different opinions about this. Uh, and, and, and even in this case, I think that we should think of the task and we should think of the models in order to choose what method suits us. So it's a bit difficult, I think, to find the consensus and, you know, uh, like some key that can open all the doors, uh, particularly when it comes to deformable objects and the tasks that are related to deformable objects. Yeah, but at least in the vision community, they agreed on some basic tasks like recognition, for example. No, let's let's yeah, but find out this is, docs yes, and images. Yes, but this is just a task. I mean, that should we found a task? I mean, that there are so many we cannot choose. This is just a, a specific problem, and all the papers deal with this problem. But should we deal with, for example, with the folding? Uh, or should, there are there are different semantics as well behind this task. And also, as you said, that the, the embodiment is very very different. So you may have just a pinch grasp, or you may have more more complicated uh, type of grasp with with um, um, human like hands. Different uh, sensors. Different sensors. Uh, I mean, you, you have people that working with haptics, you have people working with cameras, you have uh, people that uh, you work with simulation, for, for, for example. And, yeah, but and then, maybe, of course, they need to generalize. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it would be a first step towards this, just to try to agree on a, you know, one or two tasks that we can all work on these and then try to compare one against another, benchmarking basically. Yes, I think that um, there are many works in benchmarking, right? I mean, that there was like also this rally issue that has like several stuff of, of benchmarking. We could um, say there are many, as many benchmark words as tasks. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, so this, the, this, the, the, the vision community could agree on a simple task at the beginning that was recognizing dogs on images. And then they started to make things a bit more complicated once this was already there. Uh, and we are doing the inverse. We are saying, no, no, we are not dealing with these common problems we are doing. And everyone is dealing with a different problem. So now the comparison Because comparison they have gone our... through, they have databases that they could work against. That's easier. Mm -hmm. If you provide some, like some sort of, imagine we could collect, it's like, it's not doable, but like collect the experience from the robot. And then you can just use like a simulated robot the problem is that you, the problem is the simulation that you cannot simulate well. Yeah. Okay. Then, sorry, then, I, then I, we like need Zachary. Is, is here, like, Zachary is but, just like, yeah. <laughs> we need him to provide us with a nice simulation of, the, of these deformable things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that simulation is, is indeed a very difficult problem. We have recently uh, published a quite simple simulator again, but it's for deformable objects. It's reform. It will be presented in ICRA 2021. But I will return back to the task uh, thing and the, the task selection because, I mean, um, when we started working with the mainly deformable objects application, we make like a categorization in terms of task. And then we have something that we call explicit shape control. That I mean that you have a configuration and you want to bring it in a specific desired uh, position, which is like more a toy problem. But then you may have, uh, no, or this is implicit, so, right? You may have explicit shape control. And this explicit shape control can describe pretty much everything. Can can it goes to assembly? Can it goes to folding? So it's it's very high variability, and I think that it's very difficult to impose directions uh, to people when start working. Yeah. yeah. I agree. yeah. yeah that's true, but um, do you think that in the future should we? be more oriented towards learning based techniques or should we go back to control based uh, techniques because nowadays what we can see is that uh, basically we are moving towards applying the learning almost everywhere but um, is it also true for the deformable objects and uh, where should we apply or should we still try some control theory, theory methodologies and when we should not? So also, for example, from David's talk, uh, we saw some great um, application of control theory in an effective way also for deformable objects. So uh, why, uh, when should we use control theory and when should we use learning in these kind of settings? Can we use both? Yeah. Yes, and how can we combine them then? Like, I mean, I mean, you can I'm... learn a trajectory and then use a controller to actually per execute it in a soft way so that it doesn't crash against things. Or it, it does in a soft way. I can't I can let talk the expert on control. So. Yeah. Um, so can I, can I take it or someone else will start? Yeah, no one is, so I can, yeah, I can, I can start with this. Um, yes, I, I think that the, the, the most important thing is, uh, first of all, to, uh, uh, I mean, there is no way yes or no answer, I mean, to, to those stuff, either it is one or the other one. Um, and I think, uh, as you said, that we see these this nice examples from, from David in, in the morning. Uh, but what's happening uh, nowadays is that people, without, without trying the simple stuff, they go directly to the complicated, the more complex stuff. Uh, however, it should be done, I think, in a different way. So first you start with the simple stuff, you see if this is working, and then if this has some problems, then you go and then you can leverage something that it is, uh, something that is more efficient. And I would say, I mean, that if you have simple models, then maybe it's better if you start with a more, more, more physics-based and more analytic-based approaches. But if you start the complexity uh, start increasing uh, and then you have more complicated models. And when I say complicated models, I mean contact-rich models, models that are switching between different contact states uh, or for example, 
different phenomena that you may have, uh, let's say, if you have elastoplastic models instead of just elastic models that you have like hidden, um, hidden states in the model, then maybe it's good also to start to investigate in the data-driven approaches because they can somehow help in identifying the models. And also a last point uh, has to do with the, um, with the probabilistic uh, nature of the problems. I mean that if you have problems that are deterministic, like analytic-based approaches are something like, a, I mean, they are the same thing, but if, if probabilities are involved, then you need to, um, you know, start to learn the probability distribution, particularly when you have multimodalities, I would say. And I will stop speaking, so. Yeah. So if, if I may say, um, well, something I, I, I may share is, um, I don't know, I, I find, I guess probably many of you also have that feeling that maybe recently there's uh, how this question is posed as if it's a dichotomy between uh, some, some presented as a very traditional, let's say, uh, control theory and more modern looking um, uh, data driven learning approaches. So um, I, I, I mean, I, I'm probably a bit biased because my, my background is, is in, in control. And well, if I try to see it as a control problem, I, I, I don't think that one should either choose either of these to say, for example, in what, what is a learning based algorithm doing? Is this what in control one may call in a single unit, actually, like um, adapting a variable? So you have many uh, adaptive variables doing the job that you will otherwise do with a single element. So whenever there's something that you can learn and incorporating in a, a control problem, I, I just see that as very, very welcome and needed. Uh, there are many tools now, libraries, just many students are very, very good at implementing these methods quite uh, readily now. So I, I, I do hope uh, seeing more um, um, merging of this, these two um, complementary areas. One cannot like entirely replace a, a problem that by definition, you, what you need to do is to control it. Uh, I mean, one may still need to able, even if you're using a completely data-driven approach, you're still controlling something and you, you may still need to uh, be able to draw some conclusions from it. So um, yeah, just my my, my uh, stance on this will be to to, to combine, to combine whenever there is uh, things that one can combine. Yeah. Thanks, David. So, do you think that uh, some pure data-driven approach like uh, reinforcement learning? maybe a solution or may, it, may it lead to some issues when dealing with deformable objects? Depends for what you want this approach, I guess. So I think that uh, all, let's say for, for the, this new trend of using data driven approaches, the old trend, it was trying to do end to end so you input an image and then basically what you have is the complete set of robot skills that, I don't know, fold everything. This would be the classical new approach for, for this. Uh, and I think that now people discover that this is like uh, um, overkilling and the amount of data that you need to be able to react to unforeseen situations that are very common and we're manipulating the form of all the text. It's, uh, it's uh, very large. So I think that we are gonna be using the data driven approaches for solving, I don't know, control fraud problems, for example, for solving small, uh, a small perception issues, for solving even uh, robot execution, for doing, I don't know, small uh, parts of, uh, of the um, task. And we will rely on this classical uh, engineering drive and, and artificial intelligence in order to be able to decide among different options for uh, taking into account all the complexity of the 
uncertainty of the, what we have in order to be able to react to an unforeseen situations or to uh, redo something that because of the, the, the dynamics of the clothing, for example, has not uh, uh, been executed, expected, something like this. And I foresee that kind of this combination that I think that all we agree that it's needed between these two different worlds, it's going to happen in this uh, at this level, more or less. I don't know if you agree, but I think that that's what, what's going to happen. Can I say something uh, about this, uh, this question? Because my presentation just uh, cover this topic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I agree with the panel member that definitely we can combine the control theory with the data driven method. Uh, but my opinion is that maybe the problem is that how we can combine effectively to combine advantage of these uh, two ways. So actually for for my uh, ship control of a deformable linear object, our specific solution to this question is that um, we have to uh, design the transition between these uh, two phases. So this is why we use the neural network to get the deformation model in the in offline phase. But this is a uh, very maybe trivial and the training does not take very long. I just uh, good to uh, aim to provide some good estimation for the online phase. But then the novelty for this uh, ship control for the wise is that we have to build another adaptive uh, neural network system. So the challenge is how we design the, design the adaptive uh, neural network system to ensure that the way we train in uh, maybe in the data-driven offline phase can be directly transferred to the online phase. So this is our solution for the for the specific task. So back to the question. My point is that uh, definitely we can combine because the model based can be provide a very good initial status or the training status for the uh, data-driven method. And the data-driven method can definitely compensate the model uh, uncertainties. But the problem is that how we combine, maybe it's case by case. Yes, nice. Thanks. I we have another question. Uh, so it's from Adrian Kessler, and uh, so the question is: Many works are really focusing on certain types of objects, like cables, cloth, or applications like surgery or service thus missing other parts of the field. To propose scalable generic solutions to all the formable objects manipulation problem, it is important to list the problems first. So have such classifications like a taxonomy of the formable object manipulation already been proposed? So I think that a, a taxonomy, uh, a comprehensive taxonomy does not exist yet, but of course uh, it may be uh, helpful to to understand which uh, basic method methodologies we can apply for the different tasks. But of course the speakers are much more expert than me, so please. I think that there is a review that's summarizing at least the type of objects that, that they involve in, in such type of manipulations. For example, you may have the deformable linear objects or you may have objects that have uh, considerable mass, uh, but I don't know, it. and also specify different problems. But I think that the surveys, most of the times, they don't have in mind to define some new taxonomy, but they, they're just going to depict the current situation. So they, they are getting around and they're, they're getting papers and then they're collecting and putting them together. So I, I don't feel that there is some taxonomy in a way. Uh, as I said, that I have tried to make some small definition about explicit and implicit safe control. But again, this is very, very generic. And um, I mean, if you want to categorize further the uh, the implicit uh, or the explicit uh, tasks uh, when it comes to deformation control, then it's, I mean, there are many. Yeah, I don't know, maybe maybe there are some some taxonomy in terms of tasks of deformable objects, but I'm not aware of that. 
I leave to the rest if every, anyone knows more about this. Let's write a paper there. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's why not. It's uh, up to um, Michael and uh, Martina. You coordinate that. Okay. So that we get something <laughs> is late for us here in Asia. Yeah. <laughs> that that would be a great outcome of the yes, workshop. Yes. Under... We were not doing this for free, Martina. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good to know. <laughs> No, but okay. Thanks a lot. And I think that uh, if there are no other questions, we may close this uh, discussion round. And thanks a lot for being here. Thanks a lot for your Thank great you. talks and for uh, for this discussion round. And uh, we will start again at 14, so in one hour. And uh, And that's it. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you for the great workshop. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.